Hey, so you want to learn how to draw a hand. It's actually not as hard as you might think it is, or as hard as it might seem. Sure, it's intimidating and it seems really hard since you have to get it just right, but maybe you're just overthinking it. What if I told you that drawing a hand was as simple as drawing a few shapes, some boxes, and some lines? That's really all it is. The reason a hand seems so hard to draw is because you're trying to draw a hand. Instead, maybe don't try to draw a hand, but break the hand up into little shapes and then try to draw those shapes together until you get a hand. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-steps of how to find these shapes, break them up, draw them, and end up with a pretty good looking hand in the end. This process can apply to pretty much any hand in any pose, and I'll show you a few different examples. To be clear though, this video is for beginners who are struggling to draw a hand or have never even tried to draw a hand if it seems too hard. I'll be doing all of my work in Photoshop where I trace over photos with this method to show you how it applies and how you can apply it to your own method. Feel free to follow along or apply your little tricks along the way, but let's get into it. Okay, so I did this method on TikTok a few weeks ago and it seemed to really help a few people. So what I'm gonna do is break it down into very, very simple steps. So in Photoshop, it doesn't matter what brushes you use, you can use a basic pencil. I'm gonna use a basic ink brush like this just because it's very easy to see and you can very clearly see what I'm doing. I have this hand reference. I'm showing you this hand reference simply for the fact that it's straight up front. This is gonna be the most basic one and then we're gonna do some more complex ones. So I've pasted my hand design in here and I've thrown my opacity down just, just a little bit so that we can see our pencil marks over it, you see? So I'm gonna take just my basic brush and what we're gonna be paying attention to when we draw a hand like this are the basic shapes. And the biggest shape that I see is this one. This is the biggest shape that I see in the hand. So this is going to be our first basic shape. Now you can accomplish this in a few different ways. The one I just did seem very complex. So if you want, you can even break it down into just a very basic rectangle, right? You see how it kind of follows the base of the hand. And then if you want from this, you can take another rectangle and apply it to the thumb. So the next thing we wanna do is every single face that we draw, every single shape that we draw. So this is a shape that we draw. This square is a shape that we're drawing, right? Every shape that we draw on our hand is going to have a face this face is facing us i said face a lot this face is facing us which means that the center point is going to be like here right so essentially what that means is that if the hand was facing sideways or like at a three-fourths angle we would do kind of the same thing like that but the face of the hand would be over here because it would be facing this way and then when you do the face you're going to want to make a cross i call these directional lines directional lines are what help you determine which direction your piece is going so if this is going to be straight, our directional line is going to be like this. The reason this helps, you don't have to do this on front facing ones. It helps so much as when you're doing hands like this, you know, hands that are to the side. We're going to get into that in a little bit. It'll make a lot more sense in the end. So you want to break it up into shapes. We have our first two basic shapes, right? From these shapes, you want to break it up into skeleton fingers. So what I call skeleton fingers is essentially you're drawing the stick figure form of the finger. See how these joints are broken up? I'm gonna follow those joints with the directional line. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, one, two, three. And then for this, you don't even need your directional line. You can just kind of one, two, three. And the reason we do one, two, three is because these are joints. The joints are where the fingers turn. So we'll get into that more on a more complex hand. So essentially, if this finger was bent up here, let me show you. If this finger was bent up here, we could use this directional line off of the joint go like that assuming the finger was bent that way but it's not so we're just going to follow our basic thing and then here you see how this front of the thumb where the center would be is not directly in the center because if we were to draw directly in the center it would be here that's not correct it would be here so we're going to follow that directional line one two three if you have something like this you're on the right path so assuming you're doing this in photoshop or in any sort of digital program what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this layer that I have and drop the opacity just a little bit, and then take the hand I have, drop the opacity a little bit more, and then make another layer on top. Now I'm gonna take just another brush, any brush I want. I'm, for me, I'm gonna do my sketching pencil because my sketching pencil is normally what I do to sketch, obviously. We're gonna go off of our directional lines and we're gonna make shapes. So do you remember how we made a shape for this? We're gonna do the same kind of thing, but for the rest of the hand. And again, you're not gonna be tracing every single thing you do. This is just a good example to show you how you're gonna be tracing to start. And then when you start making your own complex designs, it'll kind of come natural. All right, so for the palm of the hand, 
I can very clearly see these marks are very important. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break these up into shapes. I'm going to go like this and break it up into a more geometrically shaped figure. You kind of see what I did there? And then from there, I'm going to break it up into a more another geometric shape figure. And what you want to kind of do is take the fold, the creases of the hand and kind of break them up into whatever you see is the shape. So however you can break it up geometrically, it will help you greatly in the end. And again, we're going to keep it very geometric because a little trick here is that the more geometric you make it, it actually ends up looking a little bit more anatomically correct. If I were to draw my hands like really, really like smooth and making every line perfect, it would look wrong. So doing this in this more geometric muscly shape really is going to help with your process. Moving on from the thumb, what we're going to want to do is break it up into almost a three dimensional rectangle. So everyone knows how a rectangle goes when you're doing three dimensions, right? You have one, two, and three. You have your front, your side, and your top. You want to do the same kind of thing with your, with your fingers. You want to essentially make them as if they are rectangles. So with this, I'm going to see the side of this rectangle is kind of the side of the thumb here. And the face of the rectangle is the face. Remember how I said that that center line would come into play later? This is where it's coming into play is that is the face of your rectangle. So what we're going to do is we're going to essentially just apply this rectangle to the thumb here. So I'm going to have the face of the thumb be like this right on top, be the side of the thumb following my lines. And then essentially what you're going to do is take this same rectangle idea and apply it to every single joint that you have. And it's not as complicated as you might think. On fingers like this, it's super simple because you're essentially just doing a box you're only doing the face because that's all you're seeing do the same with this and again keep it geometric you can see how i'm not really tracing it a hundred percent i'm kind of doing my own thing here and i'm fitting it more to my style and it's going to work in your own style this is just a basic method you can do whatever you want to whatever fits your style correctly like that right and then again we're going to take our thumb this is the only one where it's at a bit of an angle so following this side keep following do the side do our face like that and then the ultimate test of course is if you're doing this in a digital software to drop your reference photo and then drop your directional lines and look at that we have a hand now if you want to get real inventive with it you can kind of start lining up your joints so what some people like to do is they like to do sketches like this kind of get the wingspan right so you remember how we did this this little sketch it would apply in here to get like your wingspan right and then you kind of line up all the top joints and these middle joints and then how it applies to the thumb. However you want to do it to make it look more proportional to you is totally okay. This is a very basic design and you can't really understand all of the elements I showed. So what I'm going to do is apply this exact same method to a more complicated design. So we're going to take this, which is a more complex design of a hand. Again, when we're learning, we're just tracing because it's totally okay to trace when you're learning. This is a beginner video, so I'm gonna teach you as if you've never drawn a hand before. And we're gonna do the exact same process. I'm gonna do this one in a different color so that you can see the differences. This is gonna be a little tricky because the face of our hand is the back. The back of our hand is our face, right? So the center of the hand is not gonna be like here. That would be the center of the image. We don't want the center of the image. We want the center of the hand. Essentially the center of the hand, you're gonna use your basic judgment on this. The center of the hand is where the palm would be. So you would find the palm and just kind of assume the center of the hand is going to be here. From that, you can draw your face. Your face is not necessarily the palm. It's just whatever is facing the camera or the viewer. So the face of it is going to be kind of this whole section. So what we're going to do is break it up into our shapes again. Do like this. Break it up into more geometrically placed shapes. Add our thumb. Perfect. And now we can kind of follow the arc of the hand to get that in there and now if you really want to get inventive with it you can start playing with your three-dimensional aspects we can realize that this hand is tilted so we can kind of throw a little bit of our three dimensions in there you kind of see what i'm doing here throw a bit of three dimension in there so we sh we're showing that this hand is tilted again it's almost as if it's a rectangle and this is the face and this would be the side you kind of get that? All right, so we're going to take this same method and apply it to the rest of our fingers. This to be the center line, following each shape that it gives us. 
We're gonna do the same thing and apply it to all of it. So right down there, find the center, break up the joints. And I'm doing it a lot faster now because it's the exact same method. Find the center. So this is tricky. Look, the center of this was on that ridge line. You can very clearly see the ridge line of her finger is different from the ridge line of this finger. So the center line of this one is just gonna be on the side here. Because on this, we're looking at the face again. And on this, we have the side. You kind of see how that's working here? You wanna relate everything back to your rectangle. What's the face, what are we looking at, what's the side, and what's the top? So on this one, again, the side is kind of going to be over here. It's very faded, it's very hidden, so it doesn't matter as much. You may, you're mainly just looking at the face. And on the thumb here, the thumb is, again, where you're going to find the side. So follow the ridge line, break it up, make your rectangles, bada bing, bada boom, right? Just like that. You can kind of see that we have a hand a bit right there, right? You can kind of see we have a bit of a hand if I just kind of draw in those we we have a bit of a hand and that's what you could use for your sketches of course you can do your proportions make sure everything works out but what we're going to do is we're going to refine it just a little bit more i'm not even going to use this original layer we have i'm just going to use this blue layer as my reference and see how accurate i can get to a nice looking hand just to kind of prove my own method right or wrong and of course if it's wrong i'm going to show you that it's wrong so what we're going to do is we're going to just follow these basic shape make sure you're, you're staying real ge geometric with it of course i like making these pointed fingers just a little bit and if i really want to get inventive with it so we know that in our her reference in the reference uh this model this finger the ring finger had a very clear definitive side here but these ones didn't i can kind of improvise and add the sides if i want to so i'm going to change it up a little bit and add some sides to this finger to add a little bit of depth to it and this one's just going to be really small just to add some personal depth to it because if these two fingers have the sides um i'm going to see if i can keep it consistent and add them on three fingers again it's a lot of personal preference it's a lot of what you want to do just following a basic shape pattern thumb the thumb is honestly my favorite part to do because it's the most um the most flexible of the fingers you get the most amount of kind of movement with it and it just it looks the coolest if you draw a nice this is gonna sound stupid but if you draw a nice looking thumb someone will notice it's really cool and again like we were talking about here i want to show you the difference this is the back of the hand it's gonna have significantly less detail i'll throw a little bit of detail in there it's gonna have significantly less than the front of the hand which has all the creases the back of the hand is going to have a lot less detail, but we're just kind of focusing on the fingers, how they work together, how they work, and how they place. And I got a hand. And then again, following that, clearly you can see I was a little off because I wasn't following my reference perfectly, but it fits what I was doing and it fits the character I was going to draw with it. So it works. That You can do this method with a face hand, a back face hand, and what we're going to do is a more moving hand where it's more posed. Again, feel free to follow along if you would like. I'm going to do this one in red. Oh, that's actually a really bad color to use. Yeah, I take that back. I'm going to do this one in cyan. There we go. That's a good color to use. I like red, but unfortunately, it was blending too much in with the skin. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same method. And don't be intimidated by the folds or how the fingers look. Because again, this is where the method's going to make the most sense. Is when all this stuff is kind of folded up. This is where it makes the most sense to do this method. And this is why if you're using a hand like this or you're drawing a hand like this, it's good to take your own reference photos for your drawings because then you can trace your own hand. And it's not technically copying because you're using your own hand. So we're going to find our first shape, which is going to be the basic shape and direction of the hand. Do that. Something that's really important here that I want to point out, the direction of the wrist is this, or the direction of the forearm is this, and the direction of the wrist goes down. So it's just like where the fingers break and there's all these... Um, digits and all these joints the wrist is a joint too so we're going to play it just like the fingers we're going to treat it just like it's one of the fingers and do the directional line directional line like that and then we're going to draw our first basic shape based on that directional line so i can see that these fingers are kind of slanted this way so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that into account when doing the first directional line and do that this that right that's going to be my first hand and it doesn't look like much now but just trust the process We'll do one for the thumb too. And break it up. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and break up the design. Go to the directional line on the thumb. Break it up with the joints. Notice how I did this little 3D square here. That's going to show the top. Because again, we have the face, the side, and the top. 
But in this case, this would be our face because that's what's facing us. This would be the side and this would be the top. You kind of get that? So every single thing is going to have three shapes. It's going to have, go back to our rectangle. That's a shitty rectangle. It's going to have our face, whoops, our face, our side, and our top. The face is what you're looking at, so it's going to be this one. The side is what is on the side, of course, so it's going to be this one. And the top is on top, or on bottom, depending on however it's placed. And those are all based on this initial ridge line that you draw. So that's why that ridge line is so important to get right. And it's not that hard to get it right. You're just following the side of the finger. So again, I'm going to follow the ridge line. Just like that, right? And you can see we're starting to get a bit of a hand in there. It's a little rough now, but again, it's all about trusting the process. And this color I used probably isn't very flattering uh, against a cool gray background like that. It's more flattering against this photo. But again, find that ridge line. This one's actually, this one's a little tricky because the ridge line, you would expect the ridge line, what I just did, to go down here, but it's not going to. The side of the finger is going to be here. So the ridge line is going to stop there and go there. And now we have the rare occasion where we see more than one side. So we have this rare occasion where we see this side and this side. So what we're going to do is just following our geometric shapes again. Following this side. And then follow off of that ridge line that we already drew. Wrap around. Perfect. Just like that. Same thing with our finger. It's all about breaking it up into basic shapes. You take your basic design and you break it up into shapes. And now these ones are back on the easy ones where it's just, just the face. And honestly, fingers like this are much more interesting to draw than these ones because they move around. They have, they got movement to them. They're more interesting to draw and they provide for a more interesting composition. So the reason that I'm doing it this way, let me explain. If I were drawing just digitally, I would simply take a photo of my hand and then start immediately sketching based off the photo, right? But the reason that I'm doing this method, this block method, is because I'm trying to show you how you can do it traditionally as well. If you're looking at a reference on your computer and you want to draw it on paper, you can do this same kind of method. The only difference would be instead of drawing right on top of the image, we would be just drawing on a separate piece of paper like that separate from the image. You kind of get what I'm saying there? So that's the reason that I'm taking these steps to do this block method is to show you how to break it up. But if I were just drawing on the computer and I were just taking a photo of my hand, I wouldn't even bother with the block method. I would just go straight into sketching it. But I do highly advise the block method. Going off of that, let's sketch this out and I'm gonna show you what we have in the end. So you can see that I have my hands and you can see exactly how I did it, how, exactly how I did each one. I broke them up into basic shapes like that based on our reference photo, put the shapes on top of it, dropped the reference, and then added my detail. And again, if you want to skip out this step if you're working digitally, you totally can and just grab a reference and put your basic sketch on top, of course. And you can do that with all of them. I did the first one basic with the shapes the little block method and then trace it on top same way i did the second method but the third method i did without even using the blocks because again after using the blocks for a while you can kind of get the hang of it so let's do something a little bit more inventive here just before i'm going to make this i want this video to stay a little short but just before i want to do something a little bit more inventive to show you how this method can work in more regards all right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take an image of a hand holding a prop holding a weapon here and I'm gonna apply the exact same method to this so you might be thinking oh this method only works if you're drawing basic hands or if you're copying a hand well no this method can apply to pretty much anything so let's say you have your character holding a weapon like this what I'm gonna do is the exact same method that we did before I'm gonna find the basic direction of the hand I see the wrist goes this way the center goes this way and it's in this bit of an arcing pose so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 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 and this and now I have my basic square cool now I can do the same thing with my thumb add that shape and now I can keep moving along I'm gonna go fast on this last one because we are already done it three times you should be a pro by now we'll find our ridge line one two draw the top of our shape the front the 
the side, the other side, the top, front. Same thing here. Find that ridge line, do our top, our side, and our front. No ridge line on this one. So we'll just do based on the joints, top, front, and side. And the ridge line on this one is going to be very basic. Be right here. Same thing. Top, front, side, find the joint, work around it. Boom. And now that is a awful color. I deeply apologize. Give me one moment here. Much better. All right, that was that is an awful color example. So it, I know it looks like nothing now, but we're going to apply the exact same method to the weapon he's holding. So we're just going to very basically, this is again why it's helpful to take your reference photos. You have a one-to-one -one reference of what you're drawing and you can just trace it. And again, I know it doesn't seem like much, but this is how you break up these basic shapes. And eventually you're going to get to the point, trust me on this, you're going to get to the point where breaking up these basic shapes is super easy for you to the point where you can break them up within 30 seconds and then you can go on to the final design. These directional lines help me see what I'm drawing. Again, if you don't, if you get adequate to this and you're good at doing this and you know what you're doing, you can very quickly just take off these directional lines and not even use them and just completely sketch without using them. Just make sure that you are staying, um, again, stay geometric with it. Don't, uh, don't bother getting too organic with it. It looks, I mean, if your style is to make things smooth and perfect and you want them to be more organic, more power to you, obviously. I'm not going to tell you how to draw. If that's something you want to do and it fits your style and your artwork, by all means, do it. However, this is just me personally. And the hands that I find the most aesthetically pleasing are the ones that are a little bit more geometric, a little bit more rigid. Essentially because it just shows that you know your anatomy. And I'm not, I'm not even going to draw the gun here because this is not how to draw weaponry. Beautiful. So now we have our hand holding something from a side view. So as you can see, this method really works with just about any hand you can imagine. So what I want you to do is I want you to do exactly what I did. I want you to go into, if you have a digital software and you have the ability to do this, whether it's Krita, Procreate, Photoshop, whatever it is. If you have a digital software, I want you to go in there, find any references of hands that you can and paste them in here and start doing this exact same method because this is the method that's going to work to get to know how to draw hands, to learn how to break them up into basic shapes like this and kind of follow these directional lines. So if you're learning and you watched, then that's awesome. Thank you so much for watching. But your next step is to do it yourself. Obviously, go into your program and take pictures of hands and do that. However, I know there are going to be those people out there who do not have a digital program who want to know how to draw hands. Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. You can do the exact same method in a bit of a different way. What you're going to do is you're going to take a photo of a hand, just like the other people are, and you're going to print it out. And then you're going to you're going to print it out and you're going to take a marker and do the exact same thing that we just did. You're going to break it up into shapes like this. Break your thing up into shapes. This is a really sloppy one. But you're going to break it up into shapes like that and really focus on it. Print out five, six, seven of these so you can kind of get the hang of it. And then the more you move, the more you'll learn. The more you learn, the more you'll draw. And the more you draw, the more you'll get better at drawing. Again, this is after years of drawing hands and years of doing it in this method of tracing them. If I wanted to draw a hand without tracing it, I could apply this exact same method of breaking it up into shapes and then breaking each shape on the joints, breaking it up, and then doing more detail on top of that. It essentially works for whatever you're doing. But this is, again, is a beginner video. This is a beginner introduction, so I don't want to go too heavy onto that stuff. I just want to give you the most basic understanding of how to do it. And that way would be, of course, um, tracing. And listen, I know there's going to be one guy out there who's like, ah, oh, tracing isn't real artwork. Well, we're learning here. We're teaching. We're learning. And honestly, that's a lie because tracing is real artwork. If I take a reference photo of my hand, I can use it legally on my own stuff. Look, just because you're tracing, it doesn't mean it's going to look perfect. So it all depends on how you're drawing it and how you learn your anatomy. So I hope this video helped at least one person know how to draw a hand. And if it did help, I'd love to know in the comments below. And if you have any other tutorials you want to learn how to do, whether that's an eye, a face, anatomy, a proportion, body, whatever it is, I'd be more than happy to help you because I absolutely love doing these. But yeah, the very nice people on my TikTok who support me in every video I do, and I absolutely love them. I uh, recommended that I should do drawing tutorials since I did it on my live ones. So uh, if you came from the TikTok, let me know down below too because you're a straight homie and a legend. But that's all I got for this.